Welcome back, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week, I'm excited to present a webinar that I recorded one year ago for my Patreon members. It's a little outside of my expertise, but it's estimating residential domestic hot water capacity needs. We're actually gonna discuss domestic hot water sizing, water heater ratings, setback control, what AHRI first hour sizing method is, and of course, the impact on boiler sizing. Without further ado, here's the training. So a lot of this content is actually taken out of the AHRI guide, the IBR guide, which walks you through residential hydronic heating. So if you're in the Northeast, you're probably very familiar with this. If you're in, let's say Colorado, that's obviously a big hot spot for hydronic heating with radiant, but parts of the country go untouched when it comes to radiant or hydronic heating. And it's really important if you're going to do this, you understand how to combine an indirect storage tank with your boiler. So when sizing an indirect water heater, really you typically go by manufacturer's instructions. There's actually a, a guide that's on most manufacturer's websites. And usually they just guide you into answering some questions like number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, um, how often you shower, stuff hopefully every day, stuff along those lines. And it gives you a gallons, a first hour rating. And that's usually how you select the indirect tank. Of course, if you're working with tankless type storage, then you need to make sure that the boiler can handle the BTUs needed to heat the hot water. If you don't have manufacturer's recommendations, you can actually walk through AHRI's guide for first hour rating. I'm gonna give you an example here in a little bit. When you walk through this guide, and you find that you need a much larger boiler, it's gonna be a little disheartening. This guidance actually tells you to sometimes multiply the boiler size by much larger numbers because of the need for domestic hot water. And this is in conflict with ACA Manual S and residential code. So the only way to actually lower the boiler size when you talk about indirect storage tanks is to either increase the storage capacity or just lengthen the recovery time. Now, a lot of this is gonna to pertain to indirect tanks. So when you're talking about the tankless type, you just have to remember that intermittent capacities are always higher than continuous capacity. And usually you divide your continuous capacity by three in order to provide intermittent capacity with tankless type water heaters. So let's talk about how these tanks are rated. They give you a first hour rating. That's how much hot water you're gonna be able to get in the first hour of a warm tank. Then they also give you continuous draw. Remember, this is much lower capacity than if you were to have intermittent, right? And then of course, they actually have to rate the standby heat loss of those tanks. That's a required rating from AHRI. So the first two is really what you're looking at when it comes to, is this gonna be able to be large enough for my home and my family? Both first hour rating and continuous draw rating are actually in gallons per hour. And they're at specific temperatures. It's with the water entering at 58 degrees Fahrenheit, leaving the tank at 135 degrees Fahrenheit with boiler water heating that indirect at 180. That's really important because if you're gonna actually have a high efficiency gas boiler or propane boiler, very often you don't want that to run at 180 degrees because it's on a curve based on outdoor reset. So every time it needs to heat the hot water, it's running the least efficient that boiler probably could operate at. It's at max capacity. So what you need to know is that the indirect water heater output varies based on your boiler BTU output, the boiler water temperature setting, obviously, the domestic hot water temperature, if you like it really hot or you're okay with a little bit more mild, obviously the amount of water that's in the tank can last longer. And of course, the flow rate and how you control that indirect water heater. Typically, when you look at domestic hot water temperature rise, it's usually at 58 degrees coming in, but sometimes you have well, right? You have well water, so it might be a little bit colder coming in. So they typically rate domestic hot water heaters at two different temperature rises, 77 degrees Fahrenheit and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature rise of that water heater is higher than what it's rated for, then it's not gonna be able to deliver the BTUs and the hot water you need if you sized it correctly for the home. Speaking of controls, let's talk about the most common way to operate an indirect water heater. And that's with what's called domestic priority. Basically, it's gonna shut the boiler heating off in order to heat the hot water when it calls for hot water. This takes all the BTUs from your boiler, doesn't run the heating zones for the home, and shifts it all to reheat that tank. Usually this is accomplished with uh, zone pumps and relays. It's pretty common practice 
in the Northeast anyway, when it comes to an indirect water heater. What's important here to know is that this only works well if the hot water demand is not extensively long. Like if I have an 80 gallon tank and I'm using a soaking tub every night, I don't want to use an indirect water heater and run it off of domestic priority because we're not going to be able to heat the home when it gets really cold outside. Or if it's really, really cold outside and we're spending time heating the hot water, then we're not gonna be able to keep the temperature up in the home. And remember, a lot of these boilers are sized for 1% design temperatures, meaning 1% of the time it's colder than that outside. So if we're at that design temperature or colder, we need all of those BTUs to heat the house, not just the hot water. The longer it is in setback or the boiler is not operating when it's heating hot water, the more BTUs you're gonna lose from the space heating and the harder it is to catch back up. And it could be a vicious cycle here. Speaking of setback, if you're gonna have an indirect water heater and you have it set up for domestic priority, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you time the setback and the domestic hot water based on demand, right? Because if you don't heat the house up before your domestic hot water demand in the morning because there's two or three showers and it takes 45 minutes to let's say recover that tank, then you're not gonna be able to keep up or you're not gonna be able to heat the home and it's not gonna be comfortable when you get out of bed. So a great example of this would be, let's say I set the temperature back to 63 degrees when I go to sleep. It's a very common practice in order to save some fuel or to be more comfortable when I'm sleeping. But I want it to be, let's say 68 degrees when I wake up in the morning at 6 a.m. But I'm gonna hop in the shower. So you have to time this right. If it's gonna take, let's say 45 minutes or an hour in order to recover from 63 degrees to 68 degrees, I need to do that entire spot of heating prior to the domestic hot water demand that starts at 6 a.m. So I actually have to set my setback temperature to come back up at 5 a.m. knowing it takes an hour to heat the home before I start heating my hot water, right? Otherwise I'm not gonna be comfortable when I get out of the shower. And this is a very common callback for new installations with indirect water heaters. It's just about timing and domestic hot water priority when you set up setback. Sometimes there's manufacturers that put out great controls to track this because depending on the demand outside, uh, this amount of time it will take will vary throughout the year. So I personally used to use like the Baderis Logomatic. There's a great example of that. Um, a lot of them actually, well, McLean has all of these controls built into their boiler these days. When you talk about propane or natural gas, I think most of the manufacturers have figured that piece out. If you're going to attach domestic hot water as a priority, how to control that in order to still have comfort in the home with setback. All right. So let's say we didn't have the manufacturer's recommendation on sizing and we need to figure out how much domestic hot water this home needs. AHRI's first hour sizing method is the approach you need to take in the IBR guide. This determines the required capacity based on the actual usage patterns of the home. It's a great checklist and it tells you how many gallons per hour each activity actually gives you or uses. But keep in mind, we're only gonna use this checklist and this sizing guide if we don't have manufacturer's recommendations, okay? so. Great example here, not to say that manufacturers always recommend a much higher gallons per hour than needed. I actually put a small home, a simple two bedroom, one bath, one dishwasher into the calculator for a very well-known domestic water heater tank manufacturer. And it spit back that I needed 49 gallons per hour first hour. So that's a high amount of water for such a small home, right? And this is important to then look at when you talk about actual usage patterns, how I would come up with 50 gallons first hour, right? So if I was to walk through the sizing method in the checklist with that two bedroom, one bath home, I might actually account for two showers every morning. And every shower is 20 gallons first hour. So right there, that's 40 gallons. Also one person might shave, that's two gallons of water. And then of course, both people are gonna shampoo their hair. That's four gallons each. When you add all of that up, that's 50 gallons first hour. So I guess it's possible. But what's amazing is, is if I start adding little things into that other tool, like if I have there's one and a half bath or two baths, it dr jumps up drastically from the manufacturer's recommendations to an 80 gallon hot water heater first hour rating. So really important 
If you don't have manufacturer's recommendations, use the sizing guide. You don't probably need as much water as you think. This actually goes into how you select the boiler as well. So let's talk about if additional capacity of the boiler is needed with that indirect water heater that I was talking about from that popular manufacturer. They actually recommend 55,000 BTUs as the minimum amount of the boiler BTUs needed to heat the hot water in that tank, that indirect, the 50 gallon first hour rating. If I didn't have that, and I actually walked through the AHRI conditions, it depends on the heat loss of the house and the ratio of BTUs needed to heat the hot water versus the heat loss. In order to calculate the BTUs per hour that you need, if you have gallons per hour for first hour rating, all you need to do is plug it into this equation. It's BTUs per hour equals gallons per hour times the constant of 8.33 times your water heater temperature rise, right? So your temperature hot minus your temperature cold, typically 77 degrees in design. If it's less than 25% of the heat loss of the house, then no additional capacity of the boiler is needed in order to accommodate domestic hot water with an indirect. Once we go over 25% though, there's a multiplier that's used in the table that you would reference in order to find out how much bigger that boiler needs to be to do domestic hot water and heat the home. Once we actually reach a 50% ratio, so simple math here, let's say I need a 55,000 BTUs to heat the hot water and I had 110,000 BTU heat loss, it's pretty high. Uh, but that would actually give me a 1.39 ratio, 50% on that table says 1.39. That would still meet the guides in ACA Manual S for equipment selection with boilers. Once we go over that, we can only oversize 40% of based on the heat loss of the home with a boiler and manual S, then we're not gonna meet code. So basically, if my domestic hot water BTU needs are more than 50% of the heat loss and the table recommends oversizing this boiler in order to accommodate for both, you really probably shouldn't use an indirect water heater or your recovery time is gonna be much, much longer. You just need to make sure you educate the homeowner with that fact. All right, so that wraps it up when it comes to calculating domestic hot water requirements and how it impacts your sizing in order to meet code. All right, what'd you think about the training on estimating residential DHW capacity? I have to say, I learned a little bit in the research and I was excited to share some experience from so many years ago. If you like this sort of thing, head over to my Patreon page where you can get access one year in advance for as little as $8 a month. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.